Today is a really exciting episode because I'm going to show you how you can use the programmer. And the programmer is really the, the center of this console because with the programmer you will create almost every bit of visual content that you will later use in your show. And one exception um, are effects because effects sort of have their own editor. But even effects you can actually create from within the programmer. But I mean, obviously that's a topic for another video. So today what I want to do is actually show you how you can create three um, first sequences. And I'm actually also going to sprinkle some advanced features in there just to give you the tools that you need to really start creating your own visual content in Granimate 2. So let's dive right into it. And the first thing that we're seeing here are the five fixtures that we patched in last week. And also what is probably still active is this highlight function over here. So whenever you select fixtures, they actually turn on. And remember, this is not just a feature of MA3D. This is actually a real life feature. So if these were real fixtures and this was a real stage and you were a real lighting operator already, <laughs> sorry. Um, these fixtures would actually turn on when you have highlight activated. But it's really important that you turn highlight off for this lesson because you won't see the program values if you have highlight on. So turn it off. All you see now in MA3D are these yellow 3D models. What I want to do in this first sequence is just take our five fixtures over here and have them turn on one by one, one after another. And I think this is a really cool way to get you started with the programmer. And by the way, the programmer is actually this part up here. Let's just select the first fixture, turn it on. Then we're going to store this as a first step called a queue in a sequence. And then we're going to create the second step, store that in the sequence, third step, store that in the sequence. And like that, you will get to know the programmer interactively. So you can see right here, this is one of the quirks. Um, if you just go ahead and click on fixtures that you have already selected, nothing really gets deselected, for example, like you maybe would expect. So you have to press clear to clear the selection. So let's just go ahead and select our first fixture. And we can see that's the, the leftmost of the moving heads that we set up last week. That's perfect. And now you can see up here, so all of these tabs up here that have this teal border, those are all the feature groups that are supported by your current selection of fixtures. So let me just clear this again and let me scroll up. So these sun strips, for example, if I select those, you can see they only have a dimmer because they just have these bulbs in there that you can fade in and fade out. So these tabs up here, they already show you what sort of features are supported by whatever you have selected. So now if we go back to our behind the stage fixtures right here, clicking on the first one shows you how much we can set up here. But I mean, obviously, first step is go over to the dimmer part, then click on this lovely piece right here, enter 100 for 100%. You can see up here, you can choose between zero and 100 in this field and click on please. By the way, please is one of these weird things because you don't really know what it is in the beginning. You sort of look for the enter keyword like you would expect it on a keyboard that doesn't exist in Granime 2. They thought it's funny to rename that to please instead, which is incredibly confusing at first. So whenever you're thinking, all right, I made an input, now I want to confirm that input, I want to submit it, I want to enter it, you have to think, all right, now I have to kindly ask the console to execute this for me, please. And now you can see the first fixture turn on. Now what you want to do is hit store. And again, I can't really explain the details to you just yet. So to not uh, confuse you or overwhelm you. So just remember, hit store and then click on one of these. We covered in the second video that these are button executors. So these are slots on the console where you have buttons and they will do something to this content that you have in here. So unlike our bigger executors that have faders and three buttons, 
with the button executor, you just have that one button, but that's perfectly fine for what we are trying to do right now. So let's go to the second fixture. Um, and here's a special little something about the clear button. If you press it once, the selection will go away. Uh, if you press it two more times, the whole thing clears out. Now again, these two steps between, um, or let's say the one step between clearing the selection and then clearing all the values, that's also a little too detailed to explain right now. So just remember, clearing it once means just clearing the, the selection but keeping the values, and pressing it three times means getting rid of all the values. So now let's go to the second one, dimmer 100, store in here, and now something special happens. This always only happens with the second queue. So for this executor right here, you choose what to do the next time you hit store because there's content in there already. What we want to do is always create a additional queue. And again, queue is just another word for steps in this case. And we won't have to deal with that again whenever you hit create second queue. Now, you know, after you did that, um, it will always create another queue. So now just press clear three times. Better. And now we're going to the third fixture, turning it on and then store a third queue, clear three times. And by the way, to make this a little faster, when you just want to turn on the dimmer and set it to 100%, you can actually click on add two times. And then store our fourth step, clear three times. And then our fifth step, add, add, store. And like that, we should have our sequence. Let's give it a go, <laughs> no pun intended. Let's give it a shot and just press go. First fixture turns on, perfect. Second fixture turns on, yes, but wait a second. Now we have all of them turn on. This is not what we expected, right? Now here's a little tricky part about lighting consoles because they, by standard, by default, ship with a feature called tracking. And what that means is that whenever you enter values into the programmer and store them, they will remain there until you tell the console to turn it off again. And this is a little annoying. Um, this actually, the reasons for that actually go back to the technology being so limited that they had to optimize uh, storage space, which is obviously bullshit in today's world. So. Welcome to the backwardness of, of consoles all around the globe, across all manufacturers. Don't even get me started on that stuff. Let's just get around that and learn how to deal with that. Um, and the second thing, if you want to turn this off, again, Grand MA2 being very literal, what you have to do is go off and then click on this executor and now it's turned off again. All right, so how do we deal with this? Um, first of all, select all of your fixtures and just tell them to be at zero. All right. So like that, we always tell the programmer to keep it at zero. All right, now to get around this, we have to slightly adopt our method. So let's start over. Take the first one, add add store in an empty slot. Now what we want to do actually to get around the tracking feature is go at zero. At something always sets the dimmer just because you use it so many times that they actually created a shortcut for it. So now we have that set to zero. It says over here closed. Now we're selecting the second one, store, create a second queue. Go add zero, now create, take this third one, store, and then add zero. Fourth one, add, add, 
to turn it to 100%. At zero, please store. All right, now let's check it out and you can see now it works like a charm. Perfect. So as the second example, I want to show you something a little advanced. And that's just to give you enough tools to actually start having a lot of fun with this programmer. So what I want to do now is actually turn these left fixtures on and let's give it a color. So over here in our tabs that group the different features together, go over to color. And you should immediately see mixed color. But if you don't see that, then just know that this part over here is actually subcategories within the color category. So that's how many features these fixtures actually give you. So just go over to mix color and you can already tell that you could probably set, you know, your RGB values individually, but I mean, yeah, we can try, but who the hell has, you know, a good feeling for these values in terms of like the, the RGB components of a color, right? So let's go over to special dialogue and this is what you want to have. Let's give this a nice color just like that. Perfect. Now let's store that. Store. Let's go over here. Perfect. So this is the first trick. Whenever you see the special dialogue, especially for colors, it gives you more of a visual way to select the parameter. Now the second trick that I want to show you, which is really, really cool. If we now go at zero, you can see, all right, you know, dimmer is closed of these two fixtures that we just had activated. Perfect. That's what we wanted because I want the leftmost to blink and then the rightmost to blink. Now we can do something special though. And that's really, that's an advanced feature, but you're going to have a lot of fun with that. You can see over here, we have different layers. So right now we just set the values. If we go over to fade though, ooh, and go over to dim, we can actually set this to one second. And now what that will do is the value that we set over here in the dimmer will have a fade time of one second. And you can see that down here, um, we're actually fading this in. You can see one second and, and it's all green. All right, so now go over to value store, create a second queue, and let's check it out what it looks like so far. So first, it turns on with the color blue that we selected, and now if we press it again, ooh, it fades out. Isn't that nice? Isn't that cool? So, let's go to the, the rightmost two fixtures. First of all, again, turn it off. Turn the executor off by going off, and then clicking on it, and you will notice that they don't have a line selected. This one still has the blue line selected, so this is still on. And now you can also see the values disappear from the fixture sheet. So let's take the two uh, fixtures on the right. So, so let's select our two fixtures on the right, turn it on, then color, I don't know. Let's pick a different color. Ooh, yeah. That's nice. And then dimmer set, color set, store. And now again, set it to 0%. Go to fade. One second, please. And then store. And now let's check out the result. Oh, that's really nice. All right, and that's the third example I want to show you how that also works with positions. So let's take all of our fixtures. First of all, turn it off again. Whenever you see these ye yellow outputs and this blue line right here, it means that's still turned on. It still outputs values. So let's take all five of our fixtures. Again, turn it on. Then uh, give it a color. Yeah, just like that. And now what I want to do is I want to tilt it a little bit. By the way, if 
you move this thing around and the fixtures move like crazy, that's because the sensitivity is still set to normal. Just click on this once and then it says fine. So let's just move that over here a little bit. And now what's really cool is if we store this, all of these steps, they will actually fade to each other. And that's such a cool feature. So now when we actually uh, tilt this forward quite a bit and we give this a different color, and now we store it, then what will happen is that it will start out like that with that color that we just set, and then it will move to the front and turn to the different color. And that's a really, really cool feature. And it's gonna look amazing. But one thing that's also really important to note, and a third step, what I wanna do now is uh, actually set these to zero. And now you can see we still have a dimmer value set in here and also a position value. But now what I wanna do is go up to the sun strips and turn these on, but I want them to fade in, right? So again, what was the, the trick? First, we're going to set the value. So at, at to turn them completely on. And then we go over to fade and give this one second. And now we're going to store this. And as the third step, just fade it out again. So set at zero, fade, value, one second, store. All right, and now you can see, pressing clear three times deletes all the values. Now you can see that we have a really complex look going on. So first step, then we're going to the second step, third step, fades all of these in, and then third step, fades them out again. And so the programmer always works in the way that you select something, you set a value for it. If you want another group of fixtures in that look, just select a different group, set a value to it, and then store it. And so like that, you can really layer different fixtures with different looks and positions and fade times to create some really, really beautiful looks. And with that being said, we're at the end of today's video. So thanks for watching you guys. If you learned something today, please give this video a thumbs up and get subscribed. Get help when you're stuck by joining the Facebook group. Link is in the video description below. And also new episodes every week. So if you don't want to miss an upload, make sure to turn on the notifications. And with that being said, my name is Jonas. Thank you so much for watching and see you next week.